Amen. You know, we're in the house of God today, and there is nothing. Everybody say nothing. nothing. There's nothing that he can't fix. There's nothing else that he can't heal. He can take care of every single need, every single burden, and every single thing that's going on in our lives today. Amen. 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 I'm so glad that it is Revival Weekend. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I thought we had a great service last night. Amen. And I'm expecting God to work and move for us here today. Amen. 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 And so as uh, she's preparing to get ready, just want to introduce to you here today uh, is Pastor Alyssa. And she is a special gift. She's been uh, on the missionary field, right? Okay, and I'm sure she's going to share some other things. And uh, she's also married to uh, Mr. Pastor Tyler back here. Everyone say hello, Pastor. Hello. <laughs> and so let's just give them a warm welcome here uh, this afternoon. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so, Pastor, mm -hmm. I'm going to hand this over to you. Thank you. Hello, Great House of Church of Nazarene. Hello. Um, I feel honored to be here today. I feel honored that God would call me here um, into this house to worship with you. So thank you for letting me come and minister to you. Uh, like Pastor Phil said, I'm Pastor Alyssa. Um, I serve and minister at Princeton New Life Church of the Nazarene. Um, I'm an associate pastor there, associate pastor of discipleship. I'm also the NMI president, so uh, my role, what I do there, is I just help Princeton New Life to become a missional people and uh, answer the Great Commission, fill the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all nations. Um, so, yes, I am married to Pastor Tyler, that beautiful bald man right there. <laughs> Um, he is the associate pastor of blessing at New Life. If you don't know what that is, ask him after service. He'd love to tell you. But so we've been married for a little over a year now. Um, don't have kids. Don't want any kids. Um, we're on the path to ordination, so we're in uh, seminary classes. Um, not ordained yet, but well on our way. Um, but we just want to spend our lives just pouring ourselves out for the gospel of Jesus Christ and. We like to say that we love to just destroy hell for a living. Amen. Amen. So, Hallelujah. Yeah. So we feel privileged to be here today and to, to worship with you all. One time in a staff meeting, our, our pastor, Pastor Andrew, he says something like, so we're just a group of people that really most of the time have no idea what we're doing. And so I just want to be really confessional. I have, I just feel like I have no idea what I'm doing, but I do want to just be obedient to what God has called me to share, what he has put on my heart. I want to be faithful with that. Yeah. And so um, I will do that today in love and in humility. But um, I don't know how long this is going to take. I just want to release God's message until the Spirit releases me. Um, so if you would, just bow your heads. just want to... Spend some time uh, welcoming him here in his place today. Lord, it is so good to just gather together under this, this roof in your house, Lord, to, to be where you already are, Lord, to come and to meet with you, Lord. Um, we, just want to, we just want to tell you today, Lord, that you are welcome here in this place. You are welcome to to speak to us. You are welcome to move in the ways that you want to move, Lord. Um, and whatever you're calling us to, whatever you're speaking, Lord, we promise to be obedient to that, Lord. And so I just pray for every heart, for every individual that's here um, that might be on a live stream somewhere. I just pray, Lord, that their hearts would be receptive to you, that they would be sensitive to the words that you're going to speak, Lord, and to not just let a word that word just come to us and leave us, Lord, but to come to us and change us, to be more made into the image of Jesus Christ, to be made more holy, Lord. Make us holy as you are holy, Lord. Just, we just love you, Lord. Use me to um, speak your word to your people. Um, pray that you would help me to speak this in confidence and in boldness, Lord. We just praise you. You're worthy of it all. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 So, um, if you have a Bible with you, you can open it. I know that it's up there on the screen, but sometimes it's just good to have a physical Bible in your hand if you're sore. Uh, we're going to be in Songs of Solomon. I don't know how many of you, of you in here today have ever uh, heard a sermon on Songs of Solomon, so it might be first time, but this is just a word that God put on my heart to speak to you. But um, some people interpret this book um, as, a, as the relationship or the love between God and his church, so God and us. Um, so I'm going to be in chapter 5. And I'm going to read a couple verses. So I'm going to start actually in verse 2. And I'm reading out of the NLT version. So it says, I slept, but my heart was awake. When I heard my lover knocking and calling, open to me, my treasure, my darling, my dove, my perfect one. The head is stretched with dew, but my hair with the dampness of night. But I responded, I have taken off my robe. Should I get dressed again? I have washed my feet. Should I get them soiled? My lover tried to unlatch the door, and my heart thrilled within me. I jumped up to open the door for my love, and my hands dripped with perfume. My fingers dripped with lovely myrrh as I pulled back the bolt. I opened to my lover, but he was gone. My heart sank. I searched for him, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I called to him, but there was no reply. The night watchmen found me as they made their rounds. They beat me and bruised me and stripped off my veil. Those watchmen on the walls make this promise to the woman of Jerusalem. If you find my lover, tell him I am weak with love. So here we have a woman and a man in this story. Um, and we find that the woman might be in her home, but she's she's getting ready for bed. She's she's laid down. She's at the place where she lays her head down at night, and this man has found her. He has found the place where she's at. He has come to her, and he arrives at the place where she's at, and he knocks on the door, and he says, "Open to me." So this is an invitation that this man is extending to this woman. So he says, you know, let me in. Open to me. Let me in so that I can delight in you. Let me in so that I can love you. Let me in so that we can share a new intimacy with one another. So he says, open to me. Then he calls her my treasure, my darling, my dove, my perfect one. And as I was reading this, I almost kind of heard the desperation in the man's voice as he's saying, open to me, my beloved, open to me, my treasure. I long for you, I desire you, I love you, open to me. And I just, I just heard the desperation in God's voice when he's, when he's saying, open to me. So that's maybe the first um, thing I wanna say here today is that you are God's treasure and he longs for you. He is a God that wants intimacy with you, he is desperate for you. He longs for you. Yes. Yes. So, so when I, when Tyler and I met, I was still a missionary living living in Brazil, and so our relationship actually started thanks to you, Lydia. But our relationship started <laughs> while I was home for a vacation, and so. I don't want to give all the details because no one cares about that. But as our relationship grew, uh, we actually fell in love. And so it was harder and harder and harder to be away from one another as time passed. And so as time passed, I kind of grew to have this love-hate relationship with Facebook video chat um, because I didn't want to just talk to this man on a screen. I wanted to just jump through the screen and just be with him already. And so it got to the point where just my heart just ached for it, just to be with the one that I loved. And, um, I feel so much in love that it just hurt. Like it, it just, some of you know what I'm talking about in this room, where you just love someone so much that it just hurts, yes. and your just heart just aches for them. And so I just, I just grew to have this, this longing to be with him. And so um, I'm bilingual, I speak English and Portuguese, but in, in English, oftentimes we'll say, I miss you, right? We've all said that to someone here. Um, 
I miss you. So you're, you're realizing this person's absence and you're missing them. There's actually a word in Portuguese that is just, it goes beyond just merely missing someone. It's the word saudades. If you want to try to say it, you can. Saudades. Oh, look at y'all, you're fluent. <laughs> so um, this word actually means, uh, it goes beyond just missing someone. It's to desperately long for someone to the point where your heart aches. And this is God's heart for you. Yes. God has saudades for you. He longs for you to the point where his heart is aching. He is desperate for his bride, his beloved, his treasure. He aches to commune with you, to grow in intimacy with you. He is just waiting to lavish his love over you. Yes. Amen. His heart beats for you. And so when he knocks on the door of your heart, and says, open to me, this is what God's feeling for you. This saudade, this aching, this longing, this desperation. And so I know that there are many times where God's knocked on the door of my heart. And I know that there's a lot of times where God knocks on the doors of our churches. But I, before I get into that, I want to read again her response to this knocking. Okay? So this is actually in verse 3. This is what she, this is how she responded to this desperation that God feels, that this desperation that her beloved feels to just get into the place where she is. This is what she says. I have taken off my robe. Should I get dressed again? And so, you know, I just, I just had to giggle. Um, you know, she's she's ready to go to sleep. She's ready to get some shut eye. She's made herself comfortable. She's laid down in bed. She's taking her robe off. And she she makes this excuse as to why she can't let her beloved in. And she says, I have to put my robe back on. Are you kidding me? Like, I don't know about you, but that just seems like a really, really lousy excuse. If, if I were gonna make an excuse like she was gonna make, I would have come up with a better excuse than I have to put my robe back on. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so if one lousy excuse isn't enough, she goes on to actually make another lousy excuse. And she says, I've washed my feet. Should I get them dirty again? So she says, I got to put my robe on. And not only do I have to put my robe on, I have to walk across the floor and get my feet dirty. Man, what a burden. <laughs> so this is something that you know, there's these excuses that she's making as to why she can't just let her beloved in. And so, you know, I feel like we do that in our own lives. You know, we hear God knocking at the door of our hearts saying, hey, let me in. I want to delight you. I want to love you. I want to, I want to share an intimate moment with you. Yeah. And, and we just make these lousy excuses of just, well, I, I just can't because of fill in the blank. I can't because... I have to go to the grocery store, and Tyler and I were talking about this on the way here, but God is a God who can make manna fall from heaven, and yes. we're worried about going to the grocery store, yes. and I just, yes. you know, yes. we're worried about that, and God wants to have an encounter with us, and so she's made this knocking some kind of inconvenience for her, so this is something that's going to come to disrupt her routine, to dis disrupt her normal um, something that will cause her to be made uncomfortable. She has to put a robe on and walk across the floor. And so he extends this invitation to share love and intimacy with her. And it's met with excuses. It's met with also two different things that I, I thought about as I was reading this. And those two words are apathy and indifference. Yeah. And I looked up the definition of those. Basically the same thing. Apathy is the lack of emotion or interest. Indifference is without interest, without enthusiasm, or concern about something. So we do this in our own individual lives. We hear him knocking the door of our hearts, the invitation to spend time with us. We hear him wanting a greater intimacy with us. We want, hear him wanting us to step more into a fuller way, into his love. And oftentimes I've done it. You know, we've probably all done it. We respond with those three things, with excuses, with apathy, and with indifference. And so her, her excuses were the robe and walking across the floor, and I just, 
you know, I don't want to ask the question, what is my excuse? Why don't I answer him when he's knocking at the door of my heart? I'm afraid. I'm busy. I want to keep controlling this situation because I'm afraid that if I lose control, then I'll just fall flat on my face. What is it? What is the excuse? What is what is it that keeps you from answering that that knock at your heart? And you know, apathy and indifference is is more or less this attitude of ah, I can just take it or leave it. It's fine. Like, I don't I don't need the church. Like it'll be there tomorrow. It'll be there next week. Or I don't need to attend that prayer service. Like I don't need it. I I can just take it or leave it. It's fine. So <clears throat> there's just this this lack of interest, this lack of concern, this lack of hunger and desire for that that more that God has for us. And so I don't say any of this to condemn you. If you feel condemned, that's not of God, right? Yeah. That's of the enemy. Right. I say this to love you up to the standard of holiness that God set for you. That's good. And so you know how all of this leaves God to feel at least him grieved. Like if I were to knock on the door, Tyler's door, and he didn't answer me. He made excuses. He was indifferent to my love. I, I would feel grieved. And I just I just never want to put myself in a place where I grieve God. Amen. I grieve his heart. Yes. So we do this in our individual lives, but we also do this in our churches sometimes. Um, I've visited a lot of different churches. I've fundraised. I've lived in Nashville. I got a social work degree there at Jerecca, and I spent a lot of time trying to find a home church. Didn't end up, end up being a Nazarene church, but I just sat in a lot of churches and a lot of places where I just think to myself, I just don't know if God's love will care. I just don't know how much freedom he has to move in this place. So it's, it's a real issue. Um, so I just I don't know how many churches are represented here. I know there's two at least, but if, you're, if God were to just, if Jesus were to come and to knock on your, your church door, how would you respond? Would you let him in? And if he were to come and, and, and be here in this place or be in your church, would you worship him? Yeah. Would you worship him? Would you, or would you worship your perfectly laid out plan? Would you worship your tradition? Would you worship just your sense of what you feel is normal? I mean, Tyler and I have talked about this also on the way here is because we, we pray this prayer like, okay, come Holy Spirit, and, and just we want you to be here. Come Holy Spirit, but just just move in the ways that we want you to move, right? I, I want to, God to move in the ways that he wants to move. Yes. I don't want to just set that agenda for him. Amen. And so, so I just want to tell you today that God wants to do something new. Yeah. Yes. Do you believe that? He is inviting me to something new. With that statement, I want to take you to, to Exodus 34. Um, I'm going to set this up for you because there's a lot of different verses that come ahead before this that gets us to this place. But Exodus 34, but actually in Exodus 24, God calls Moses up to the top of Mount Sinai and he gives him instructions to for the Israelites. So there, on top of the mountain, in a moment of God's glory, Moses receives from God the Ten Commandments. It says they were inscribed by the finger of God. Later in Exodus 31, the Lord was actually finished speaking with Moses and um, calls him down to the foot of the mountain with the Ten Commandments in hand. And what does he find there? He finds idolatry. He finds God's people worshiping the golden calf. So Moses, in a fit of burning anger and rage, takes the Ten Commandments so inscribed by the finger of God on the stone tablets and just throws them on the ground out of anger. And as he throws them on the ground, they break. They're in pieces, okay? And so this is where I want to pick up in Exodus 34, verses 1 through 4. Then the Lord told Moses, chisel out two new stone tablets just like the first ones. I will write on them the same words that were on the tablets you smashed. Be ready in the morning to climb up to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me on top of the mountain. No one else can come with you. In fact, no one else is to appear anywhere on the mountain. Don't even let flocks or herds graze near the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two, two, two new stone tablets just like the first ones. 
Early in the morning, he climbed Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. He carried the two stone tablets in his hand. So, it's important sometimes when we read scripture to know what God's not saying. Yes. Yes. So, what God did not command Moses to do was, Moses, take those broken pieces and take them back up to the top of the mountain so that I can take the broken pieces and just put them back together again. God didn't say that. God didn't command that. Um, God wanted to make something new. Okay? So this something new didn't have a brand new identity. It was still the same Ten Commandments. It was just written on two new stone tablets. And so it was a new creation. Okay, so I do want to just, before I go on, say that nothing and no one is irreparable or irre irredeemable. So, yes. But oftentimes he does want to do something new, something new inside you, something yeah. new inside your family, something yeah. new inside your church, something yeah. new inside your community. Yeah. He wants to do something new, but oftentimes we can't step into that new thing when we're just so busy hanging on to these broken pieces, yeah. right? That's this right. broken thing that doesn't really work anymore. And so all of us here today, I hope, we're all here seeking revival. Yes. So we want revival in our families, inside yes. of us, in our churches, in our community. Yeah. Um, something we desire, but this desired revival can't happen when we're wishing and praying for God to take something broken and fix it. Yes. Oftentimes, God's going to ask you to take your broken pieces and grieve them. Grieve that thing that's old. Grieve that thing that's broke. We can't take that and say, here, make it work again. Yeah. No, he's like, right. no, grieve it and leave it. Yeah. So that I can welcome you into the new thing that I have for you. Yes. Yeah. And so, so sometimes he just wants to do a brand new thing. And, and oftentimes I respond to that to God and say, well, that old thing was really good, God. I just really love that old thing. And he's like, don't you trust me? Like, can't, can't you trust me that the new thing is also really good? Yes. So it hurts to grieve those old things, those broken things, but you can trust that the new thing is also very good. Why? Because God gives really good gifts to his children. And so I just want you to remember this. Revival happens when we respond to God's invitation to do something new. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I want the new thing. I don't want to yeah. just keep praying that God take my old thing and make it whole again. Make it work again. Because the new thing is oftentimes just as good, but it's also oftentimes even better than the old thing. Yes. So I know I'm jumping around a lot. Maybe this is all exhausting for you, but I'm going to go back to Song of Solomon. And I want to finish that story, verses 4 through 7. So this woman was delayed in her response to open for her beloved. And when she finally opened the door for him, we read that he was not there anymore. He's no longer to be found. And I just wrestled sometimes with this part of the story because it's really, you know, natural for me to think, well, God's always knocking at my door. He never stops knocking. So, like, what, Lord, what is it that you want to speak to me in, in that part of the story? This is, this is what I got. So I shared this story with New Life a couple months ago, so if you've heard this, I won't apologize, but you're going to hear it again. So a couple of years ago when I was living as a missionary in Brazil, oftentimes we would go to this basketball park, okay? And that specific day, it started to rain, which was sometimes a moment of praise for us because everyone in the basketball park would huddle underneath of this shelter until the rain would pass. So it's just a perfect opportunity to do ministry, a perfect opportunity to evangelize, speak the gospel, do worship songs. So someone on my, my uh, missionary team, his name's TJ, he got out his guitar and he just starts playing worship music. And before you knew it, everyone who's at the basketball park is in a circle and we're all just praising the Lord. Some of them didn't even know a single word to the song, but that was okay. We were all in a, in a spirit of worship in that place. And so, as we're worshiping, I'm standing there, and I'm looking at all the people that are in this circle, and I'm like, hey, wow, this is really great. And God just kind of taps me on the shoulder, and he's like, 
that girl over there. And he draws my attention to some, a girl that's on the exact opposite side of the circle. And, and he's like, I want you to go over there and I want you to stand next to her and I want you to hug her. I'm like, what? <laughs> you want me to do what? <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> I am not someone who loves hugs. Um, I bless all of you who are huggers. If you need you in the body of Christ, I am not a hugger. This girl does not know my name. I do not know her name. And she probably doesn't want me to hug her, Lord. And so I just hesitated. And I made these excuses in my mind of why I couldn't just go and do the thing God asked me to do, even if it didn't really make sense to me, and even if it was uncomfortable. So I dismissed it, okay? So I'm standing there, and my teammate, Brooke, is sitting right next to me, and I just look over and I see her, and she's walking across the place, and she's walking around the circle, and she goes, and she stands right next to the girl and puts her arm around her. And in that moment, my heart was so grieved. It still grieves me. And so I just realized that in that moment, God wanted to use me to bring revival into that girl's heart. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I wasn't willing. Wow. And I made excuses. And I was indifferent to his, his command and his love for her. I was indifferent to it. Yeah. And so I just was grieved. I started crying. And I was like, Lord, I know that you wanted to use me. And I just, I don't love that you had to go and seek someone else to use because I wasn't willing. Yeah. Wow. And so I just, I carry that story with me because, you know, if I'm not willing to be used by God to bring revival to the people and the places around me, he's going to go use someone else to accomplish his will. Yeah. And I want to be the one that God uses. I don't want to dismiss yes. that, right? Yeah, right. And then so, so God wants to to bring revival in places where we are through us as individuals, but he also wants to bring revival through our churches, right? And I, I don't I don't want God to knock on the door and be like, well, that people's not willing. I'm gonna go somewhere else to accomplish my will. I'm gonna bring revival through someone else. I don't want that. I wanna be the one that God uses. I don't know about y'all. So we see the woman in Psalms of Solomon go out into the night. So she um, finds that her beloved's not there anymore. So she actually takes a step to go seek him out. So she's walking around in the dark of the night, in this darkness, and she's beaten, flogged, and stripped of her veil. So stripped of her innocence and her purity. So that's another thing I want to say is life apart from God, life apart from your beloved, will leave you wandering around in darkness, vulnerable and oftentimes naked. I just want you to know that you need him. Yes. You need his love. You yeah. need his intimacy. If you don't have it, if you don't respond to his invitation, you're just going to keep walking around in darkness. Yes. Yeah. But there's good news in this story. Don't worry. She does end up finding him. She does end up seeking him out. Um, I'm actually going to go to Sons of Solomon 6, verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read this for you. Where has your lover gone, O woman of rare beauty? Which way did he turn? So we can help you find him. My lover has gone down to his garden, to his spice beds, to browse in the gardens and gather the lilies. I am my lover's and my lover is mine. He browses among the lilies. So she finds him in the garden. That's where she finds him. She knows that that's where she could go to find him, was the garden. And as I was thinking about that, I was just thinking that place in the garden was where her intimacy with her beloved was eventually restored. And I just thought that that was so significant that she went to the garden. Um, because the place where we were formed and created, the place where we had untainted communion and intimacy with God was the Garden of Eden, right? Yes. Do you know that? We had this with God before sin entered into the world. And so just want you to know you were created as an object, as a recipient of God's love and affection. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the place where God's love and affection is intended towards is us. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? The God of the universe wants to love us. Yeah. So ever since sin entered in, he's been actively seeking to restore that intimacy that was lost. And I just 
I just love that she knew she went, she could go to the garden. She could go to the garden to find God. She knew that that was the place where he was in his presence that her intimacy could be restored. It was that easy. And so ever since that moment, he's been knocking on the door of our hearts and our churches and saying, come, come to me, my yeah. beloved. I want to restore my intimacy with you. Yes. So how is it that you respond to him? I don't want to grieve him. I don't. But I want to ask you, how is the Lord speaking to you today? How is he knocking at the door of your heart, the door of your, in your, of your churches? Yes. And so I do, I want to give you a chance to respond to this. I don't just want this to be a message that we hear and then we leave. I want to respond to God's knocking. I want to respond to God's invitation. And so I just, I want to ask you the question, what is God inviting you into? And maybe that's a question you need to ask God so he can tell you. I don't know. What, Lord, what are you inviting me into? How, what is it that you want me to receive? What happens when I open to you? And so I just invite you to just, Find a prayerful posture. So whatever that is for you. Maybe you need to close your eyes and bow your head. Maybe you need to bow at your seat. It's okay if you bow at your seat. We also have these pretty altars here. These are a place where God's promised to meet us. You can come here and you can kneel at the feet of Jesus and ask him this question, what are you inviting me into? And if you need to lay flat on the ground, no one's going to judge you. It's okay. However you feel like you need to Respond to God in this moment. Respond to his word. And ask him right now, in this moment, with all eyes closed and heads bowed, what are you inviting me into? So maybe he's inviting you to come back to your first love. Maybe he's wanting to restore you back to the way you were intended to be, giving you a new intimacy that he was so desperately wanting to have with you. Maybe you're, you're hearing him knock at the door of your heart and you've never invited him in. You don't know him. Maybe today's the first day where you can do that, where you can know the Lord. Is he inviting you into something brand new? Sometimes when we step into that new thing, we allow God to make us new. We realize that we carry these new things that we couldn't have carried before we were broken. Maybe God's asking you to grieve those broken pieces, those old ways. Stop looking back and longing for what you were and what you had before you were broke. And to look forward to who he's longing to make you into. He's inviting you into your church. He's inviting you into something new. And maybe you're the one that's going to go and lead those people into that. But he's asking you, will you open to me? So, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that there would be, um, that your spirit would be speaking, Lord, that you would be speaking, that you would give us the ability to hear you answer that question. Thank you, Lord, for knocking on the door of my heart. And forgive us, Lord, for the times when your invitation, your desperate longing was met with indifference and apathy and excuses, Lord. I don't want to give those excuses anymore. I just want to let you in. So I just pray for every person, for every heart, Lord, that's in need of you. I just pray that you would meet them in that place and give them exactly what they need. Lord, and that revival would start in us, but it, it wouldn't stop there. That revival would happen through us, into our churches, into our communities, into our workplaces, into our homes. That no matter where we go, that there's a breath of fresh air, Lord. That there's something new that you're always inviting us to. We want to respond to that. So just help us to grieve those broken pieces. Help us to grieve those old ways. And to invite the new thing in without fear, without hesitation. Lord, we don't have to fear you. We know that you give good gifts to those that love you and that you love. So just come. Lord, um, we love you, and we just praise you for the work that you're doing in our hearts and our churches. We pray all of this in your precious holy name. Amen. 
So since Pastor Tyler is the pastor of blessings, I want him to come and pray a blessing over you. You want to be blessed? Amen. 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 Thank you. What is the Lord needing to bless you with? Is it a greater hunger? You all are here on a Saturday at noon. But you guys aren't the only ones in this church. I'm going to bless you in the name of Jesus. And I invite you, if you're desperate, and you really want to see this church changed and you're community transformed, I invite you to be really, really bold and pray out loud with me. No one's listening to you besides God. Let's just invite his spirit here. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bless your children today. And Lord, I ask, I cry out, I plead with you, Lord, that what you would do at Greencastle Church of the Nazarene would be replicated in all the houses of worship in this community, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we invite you here into this place. And Father, we just ask that you would pour your spirit out, Lord, and that people would taste and that they would see that you are good. Lord, in the name of Jesus, would you pour out your spirit so that whenever we get a little sample of you, Lord, we would just find ourselves uh, like crying out desperate for more. Lord, we pray that you would just have this appetite for us and that, that we would match that, Lord, with a greater hunger for you. Lord, the way that you pursue us, we want to pursue you too, Lord. And so in the name of Jesus at Greencastle Church of the Nazarene, I pray that not just those here today, Lord, would receive this blessing, but everybody in this congregation, that they would receive a blessing of greater hunger, Lord. Yes. That they would be, they would, they would just be desperate for you, Father. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I just pray that they would receive every single day uh, this, like, holy dissatisfaction yes. with their life, that they would not be content with the amount that they have, but that they would just thirst after you. You are the well that never runs dry, Lord, but we just pray in the name of Jesus that you would see your children, that you would see how desperate they are, Lord, and that you would take that and that you would give that spirit over to everyone else within this church. And Lord, I pray that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus yes. with that hunger, that we yes. would not just sit idly within our church and worship you and praise you, Lord, but that we would go out into the community. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we just ask that you would bless us with a greater hunger than we stepped foot into the sanctuary today yes. with, but that you would also, you would just take that and multiply it within the hearts of every single person who yes. could not be here today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray for a greater hunger. We yes. pray for this, Lord, and we cry out to you, Abba, Father, because you are good. You give good gifts, and you want to bless us in this way, Lord. We cry out to you, and we just pray that you see us, that you sense our desperation, and that you give us a greater hunger because of it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we sit and we listen now. And we listen for your sweet voice. Meet us in the garden, Lord. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, I felt the presence of the Lord Amen. Amen. today. And when the presence of God is amongst his people, we are truly blessed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Well, as we adjourn and leave this place today, I want us to take some time today in your day to pause and to keep praying the prayers that have been lifted up within this house today. I want you to keep praying for revival within your heart. Keep praying for revival where you're at, in your neighborhood. Keep praying for revival within our church and the church abroad. Amen. Because we need the Holy Spirit to help lead and guide us in these, these days. Amen. 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 Well, let's stand this, this morning or this, this afternoon. <laughs> Evening whatever it might be. Let's bow our heads this morning. Dearly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come before you, and man, I am, uh, man, my heart is just so filled with you. My heart is so filled with you, Lord, that there's others out here I know. It's on a Saturday in the middle of the day. We're worshiping and we're going to praise you. We're coming into a, a, a revival service. Father, thank you for coming to fill the hearts and the minds and the entire beings of us here this afternoon. Thank you for this word. This word of just understanding that you want to be closer to us and and intimate with us. You want to, to walk with us step by step wherever we go. And we thank you for this word that just shows us how much you love us and how much you care for us. Lord, revival is about so many things, but I feel that the greatest revival we need is to understand your love and your grace and your mercy and forgiveness within our lives and to understand how that can just change so much within us and within our situations that surround us. So God, just help us to lean into this word today. Thank you, God, for the wonderful praise and worship today. Thank you, God, for uh, the songs and, and, and what they mean. We just ask that as we leave this place, I don't want us just to leave and it's another thing and it's this or that. I want us to really take some time to understand that that we were in your presence and that as we leave we can take your presence with us mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yes, and so Lord help us wherever we go help us take your presence with us and help it to be just holy and anointed yes. and uh, uplifting and encouraging to our community and to those around us thank you God for meeting with us here today all of God's people say Amen. 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 Amen.